but we have to understand the long term. When we when we use, I think for for trend alignment, you want to look at at least three time frames. A longer term time frame, just to say what's the overall environment that we're in, and then the secondary time frame, intermediate. That's where we want to start to look at it. So for a swing trade, for instance, I'll look at a daily time frame to say, okay, here's what this stock is doing overall. Here's where the you know institutions are involved in that. Then I'll look to maybe a 30 minute time frame or 15 minute time frame uh, that goes back two to three weeks. And I'll look at that and say, okay, here's where the key levels of support and resistance have been over the last two to three uh, weeks. I'll put some anchored volume weighted average price levels in there to give me some uh, objective look at the trends. And then I'll go down to a five minute or a two minute or even one minute if it's early in the morning to really fine tune and get my entry into that stock. So I can avoid the unnecessary pullbacks, hopefully. But again, I have my stop. So my stop is always in the same place. It's never at a different place. My initial protective stop is never at a place that's different. And it's not 2%, 5%, 7%, 8%, or any other random percentage number. So I'm making a point there is that percentage stops really mean nothing. They're only significant to you. The market doesn't care about your 2%, your 5%, your 8% or whatever you were told. It's it's good that you have a stop and it's better than no stop at all. But for me, as soon as I buy that first little higher high, my stop goes below the most recent and relevant higher low for that time frame. Because I'm buying what I think is an emerging uptrend. So if I buy right at the onset of that momentum and then the stock runs up and goes a little bit, I take a quick third off but then it comes crashing down and violates that uh, prior low. Well, what happened to my definition of trend? Higher highs and higher lows. So if it breaks that higher low, I am out. I'll take my loss and move on, not really think about it. I might look at it and say, what did I miss here or something like that? But I, I won't obsess over it and say, wow, how could I have been so stupid? Because if you have the right process, taking stops and taking losses, it's just part of the program and get used to it. If you don't, otherwise, you're going to find yourself stubbornly adding to them and you know, thinking, how can the market be so wrong? You start pulling up the news and saying, hey, what's the news on this company? If you're looking at an analyst report, you know you're dead. So what we want to do is say, you know, instead, look at it. Did I click ahead by accident? So the short-term time frame is for fine-tuning our entry. And on the short side, it's the opposite. If I short that first lower low, my stop goes above the most recent and relevant higher, uh, I'm sorry, lower high. So, and then as the stock breaks down, it bounces a little bit and it breaks down again. Well, as soon as it starts to break down again, my stop goes above that most recent high, not the prior one. So I adjust it down and listen to the, listen to the market. Let the market tell me. If I'm a trend trader for even the one minute time frames throughout the day, well, as long as it's making that pattern of higher highs and higher lows, as soon as it starts breaking that next higher high, raise your stop up underneath the most recent and relevant higher low, whether it's on a one-minute time frame, a 10-minute, to the time frame that you are trading. 